Hey guys, welcome back to my out of box review for the Master Grade Psycho Zaku Verka. So this is going to be part two of two of this out of box review. And in the first part, I covered the mobile suit, just going everything over everything with the Zaku itself, talking about some of the gimmicks with the mobile suit and all the articulation, everything of that. So in this part of the video, I'm just going to focus on the backpack and all of the weapons. So there's uh, obviously a lot of backpack there to talk about and even more weapons. So there's going to be a lot of stuff. But basically, I mean, there's not really a whole lot in terms of like stuff you can do with that. I mean, basically all the weapons you can either just put them on the backpack or you can hold some of the stuff in hands or using the kind of mechanical arms on the backpack. So anyway, uh, let's just put this guy, well, I was going to say let's put him off to the side for a second, but let's put him off to here for just a moment. Just give you guys a closer up look at the backpack itself. So as you can see here, uh, we have kind of the main backpack unit there. And then we have, uh, the, the way that you assemble it actually is you assemble that part of course first and then you assemble the lower fuel tank and then you attach the middle fuel tank onto that. So you can of course omit that middle giant fuel tank if you want. I know a lot of people aren't really a big fan of that. I like it, but I know not everyone does. So you can omit that if you want, but anyway you build that second and then you build the top one last. Uh, so the top and bottom fuel tanks are exactly the same, but as you can see, there's a bunch of connection points on there, and you'll use different ones depending on uh, how you want the weapons. Now, I've got all of the uh, weapon connections on there according to the manual, but you you could change that up if you want. You could, of course, do it slightly differently depending on how you wanted to do it, if you wanted to have it a little bit more customized to how you want. Uh, as for like the main backpack itself, uh, as you may have seen maybe in other videos or something, uh, we have a couple of like switches here on the side of the backpack that's going to allow us to lock this onto the back of the Zaku. Works really well, uh, really really nice design for that. Uh, good job Bandai for that one. I'll show you that again more in a minute. We have on top of the backpack here the mechanical arms. Those also work really really well. Uh, and yeah, the base itself as you can see like when I move it, the whole thing is kind of wobbly on there. So that is definitely going to happen, but in t I, but it's wobbly, but I'm not scared that it's going to fall off at all. It just, it's just going to wobble. Uh, so I don't know, it's not really too big of a deal. So yeah, so for mounting this to the Zaku itself, uh, we have these switches here on the side of the backpack pointed down. Uh, these are not perfectly circled, there's a little bit of like an edge to them on one side that will match up with the ports in the back of the Zaku's backpack there. So you don't have to take off this backpack that's already there. The, the huge backpack just plugs in around to that. So that will just fit onto there carefully like so and then just flip the switches up to lock it into place on both sides and then there you go it's firmly connected and not going anywhere. As for these mechanical arms on the top uh, the whole section can rotate back and forth. You can see this whole white part is just uh, the track I guess can move and then we have a bunch of points of articulation it can move like that, can rotate there same thing here, it can move there, can rotate there can move there, can rotate there, move here, rotate there and here and rotate there and here and there and here and there and everywhere so basically those mechanical arms on the top of the backpack will go pretty much anywhere that you want them to go within their range of gripping. So, and then here at the end we have uh, this part opens up and there's like a claw inside a claw there. That is what will grab onto the weapon, whichever weapon you want. So say for example we have our Storm Faust here. You want to just grab one of those. You can I think just pop this in or maybe going through this way will be better. Uh, and then just pop that on there like that to hold of this and let's see, let's put it something like that there, something like that anyway, you guys get the idea 
Uh, not going to have any trouble holding your weapons with that. I think uh, this is, of course, a smaller weapon. A heavier weapon it might be a little bit more difficult, but let's see. So what I want to go over now is just uh, mounting everything onto the backpack itself. There is, of course, a lot of things to put on. So the first thing is our extra uh, Zaku machine gun ammo. So there's four of these that will go right near the base of the fuel tanks. Uh, one on each side and one... Uh, on each side of the top and bottom thruster fuel tanks. It's kind of hard to see what I'm doing on the opposite side of the kit. But anyway, there we go. So there's those. Then we have, again, our Sturmfosts. You've got three of these. These are going to go here on the lower part. So one on each side and then one on the top just under the huge fuel tank. So on there. One up underneath here, right there, and then one on the other side. Like that. Then the Zaku machine guns will fit up underneath here, like that. That's pretty easy actually. And then on the other side, yeah, like that. There's those. And then our three giant bazookas. Now, uh, I have these extra little legs attached here. You're actually supposed to put those on after attaching the giant bazookas because one of them needs to go in the center of there. So let's take one of them off. And these will plug in here. You have to put it through. Fold that down. And put this through there. It's getting real crowded in here. So going to be tight fit, but there we go. Fits just into there like that. I guess that's in. So I can put this piece back on here. Around that. There we go. Stick this other one on these. Uh, there's this little kind of flap on the camera. A bazooka you're supposed to close up as well. Let's see in the sky. We'll go on to there and then the third one just on the other side and there we go now it is all loaded up so here is just a look around that you see those bazookas under there are going to be looking pretty cool the fuel tank is incredibly long and it almost looks a little bit odd with even nothing on top of the fuel tank up here with all that stuff under there, but I mean, I don't know. The whole thing looks pretty odd, I guess, if you think about it. Stop that from rotating, because it's not going to go around any farther. Anyway, so then the next thing that a couple people did notice is that among our extra parts with this kit, you can also build these smaller Zaku bazookas. So these are on the same runner as the Zaku machine guns, which there's two of. So you can actually build two of these smaller bazookas. Uh, there's nowhere to actually put these on there unless you did some modifications, which I think you could probably quite easily do. Uh, just scratch building some part or something to fit on the top of the backpack, and you could set these maybe on the top of there or something. If you wanted to get really crazy with weapons, or just keep these for a different kit, just keep them and give them to the other kit. The all, you have all the parts needed to build these except for the clear piece for the camera. That's the only thing you're missing, but you do have like this same thing with the giant bazookas. You have this little flap that you can just close up and then just cover that if you wanted. So, I mean, or just not use a clear piece in there for the camera at all. So, not really uh, a great loss not having that clear piece. You get these two extra bazookas you can use for whatever you want, so that's pretty cool. You do also get two heat hawks. Now, uh, each heat hawk does have a clip, so this is just a little part that will connect onto the Zaku itself, so that you can actually connect this onto there. You only have one connection point to connect one of these onto the kit, and it's on the back skirt which is going to be hard to get to at this time, but under there, deep under there, under the back skirt, there is a small little hole to attach this. Let me try to get it there. There we go, and reattach one of these tricky side skirts that fell off again. So, yeah, there you go. You also got a heat hawk, but then you have one more heat hawk, again, where 
Uh, there's not really any place to put this other one, so you could quite easily, I mean, it's just a hole. You could quite easily just drill a second hole in the back skirt and then have another one attached onto the back skirt like that, or just drill a hole somewhere onto the fuel tank and you could attach it onto there or something, uh, whatever you wanted. So, you got that. Okay, so while that's bouncing around, other uh, accessory stuff, we do also have this stand. And this is for if you're not using this huge base, you want to just have the Zaku just standing up on its own. What you'll do with this is you just set this up underneath the back fuel tank there, and then that will hold up the backpack. Um, not sure why, but uh, just if for whatever reason you do, would happen to be in that situation where you wanted to use this uh, not on the stand, uh, you could use this piece, but probably won't be used by most people, I suppose. Then for hand options, on the kit I've just got the closed fists, but then you do also have a set of fingers, you just swap out the fingers in this case for trigger fingers, for left and right hand, and that's it. So you, get, you only get um, closed fists and trigger fingers. Really, really wish that if we're going to have such a huge kit, really expensive kit, all this plastic, and they can't include a set of open fingers. Just two small little pieces with just uh, outstretched fingers like that. Uh, really, really, really disappointing that they couldn't include that, uh, that they've thrown in everything but the kitchen sink in there and couldn't include a set of open fingers, so that's disappointing. You do get almost all the parts to make a... No, you do get almost all the parts to make the regular uh, Zaku 2.0 hands, the articulated 2.0 hands, but you're just missing the part for like the wrist and then you're missing the cover for the back of the hand. So if you wanted to do some uh, modification, you could. I think this the part for the wrist is just the same as those hands. So you could probably modify that by just using taking the back cover off this, the Saikozaku hands and modifying that to fit onto these articulated hands and then using the wrist part from there. I think you could probably make these hands work if you wanted to uh, or just do a little bit of modification. You could probably make these work uh, for these for this kit if you wanted to do something with these hands. And speaking of extra parts, this is uh, all of the extra parts you get with this kit. It's mostly just like frame stuff, but there's there's some useful parts that you could definitely use for some other kits or something, so definitely hang on to these, but yeah, there's quite a lot of those. And last, but of course certainly not least, you may be wondering what about the beam bazooka. Here it is. Here is the giant beam bazooka for this kit. So again, like with the uh, bazookas and everything. I haven't put the clear pieces in, so it's missing the clear piece for the camera. I just haven't put those in yet. I'll put those in after painting. Uh, but this is it. Just very big. As you can see, it's taller than the Zaku itself. I guess you can't see it's below the frame, but it is taller than the Zaku itself. So it's going to be quite heavy as well. The handle will move up and down, so you should be able to get that over the shoulder, no problem. Not sure about the weight issue of this, though, because I've heard that uh, this is kind of heavy for this particular mobile suit, so let's try it out here. Alright, so getting into the hand, not really the most difficult thing. One thing about these hands for this kit is that they don't use any sort of like connection with the weapon, so like normally they would have like a small little peg or something, plugs into the hands. Uh, nope, not going to be using that in this case, so luckily it seems, everything seems to fit pretty well, but like uh, for the beam bazooka there and the giant bazookas. We have new handle parts for those specifically because uh, the older handle parts are slightly different shape and also you use a peg system where these hands don't use a peg system. Anyway, the weight of the bazooka doesn't really seem to be too big of an issue. It is a little bit loose uh, here. It's definitely sagging down a little bit there in the wrist joint. The problem seems to more so be the fact that there's nowhere for this thing to go over the shoulder because uh, just to get the beam bazooka up over the shoulder is is okay, but then like the backpack is there, kind of in the way. You you wanted to have it like more over the shoulder, is kind of where it needs to go, to be to look proper there. But there's just kind of nowhere for it to go. So yeah, posing with the beam bazooka in action is going to be kind of hard. Uh, I think probably the only really thing that you're going to want to be able to do with that is just sort of like holding it down to the side. And then even still, I'm finding this wrist is a little bit stiff, or a little bit loose I should say, but uh, just pushing it, pushing it in as hard as you can, uh, just to make sure that the ball is stiff in there, and then I think it's going to be okay like that. Also, once it's painted and everything, that will stiffen up that ball joint uh, in there in the wrist as well, and that will make sure that uh, 
that is a little bit stiffer. So just holding the bean bazooka like that I think is okay, but it is definitely going to be a little bit trickier to hold than the other weapons just because of its size and weight. Uh, but it is definitely a really very, very impressive weapon, so it's it would be a shame not to use it with this kit. Uh, holding any of the other weapons I'm sure will be fine. There's certainly going to be no problem holding those. Okay, and then one more just kind of gimmick thing that you can do with this, something I'll show you with the stand while I do utilize that piece there to just have this standing off to the side for a moment while I'm messing with the base. Uh, you can see this connection piece, which is connected to the top of the base, has a two different settings, so you, I've just had it on the normal mode, and it's quite hard. I actually don't even have it pressed down all the way on there. Uh, that Once you press that down all the way, I feel like that's going to be really hard to take it off. Uh, so, anyway, but you have two settings there, or you can make it a little bit more leaning forward, which will make the Zaku backpack more at an upward point angle. So there's that. Let's try that out. All right, so there we have it. Uh, that more forward pointing angle definitely gives it a little bit more, much more, a little bit more, much more, I guess, a more dynamic feel to the kit. It definitely makes it uh, look more cool because obviously one thing that I think a lot of people are going to say about this kit, just their immediate reaction will just be that it's a brick kit. I don't really feel like it's that much of a, a brick. It's more like it's a brick with a Zaku attached onto the front of it because, yeah, the backpack is obviously a huge, very heavy brick thing you can't really do anything with. Uh, but the Zaku's articulation, there's still a good amount of articulation there for doing some cool poses there at the front of the brick, which uh, is kind of the main focal point. The brick is just that sort of big, huge thing that's just hanging out in the back. So I think you can just still do some co cool posing with this, so I wouldn't let that uh, deter you too much uh, from buying the kit if that's like the thing for you. Uh, the mechanical arm there on the top holds the weapons there nicely. Um, you've got two hands, you can hold the different weapons here, you could hold just two of the giant bazookas here if you wanted. Um, again, nowhere to plug the beam bazooka anywhere onto the backpack, but again, I feel like that would not be difficult to modify if you wanted to just scratch build a connection piece to just connect the beam bazooka onto the side of the huge main fuel tank there or something. There's a lot of things that you could do. One thing that I'm not going to do in this review is I normally do a few different poses for you guys and like get this thing turning around. But as you can tell just from the camera angles that have, that have been going on in this review that this thing is just really huge. It's just really hard to get on camera and especially getting rotating around here in my photo tent is just not really quite big enough with that huge long thing. So yeah, I think the biggest thing about this kit is that it's just going to take up a lot of space. I think... Uh, the biggest deterrent for people to buying the kit, I should say, uh, is that number one, it's expensive, and number two, it's going to take up a lot of space on your shelf. You can't really have it, I mean, unless you have some really deep shelves, you can't really have it like pointing forward, you got to have it like sideways, and then it's taking up a lot of space that way. Uh, definitely having this angle is a lot better because then the majority of the backpack is more up out of the way. You could have some other things uh, underneath that on your shelf, depending on how your shelf is arranged or whatever, but yeah, it is going to take up a lot of space. Uh, in your house. So, um, otherwise, I think that this is a really cool kit. Obviously, the price is very expensive. You're getting a lot of plastic in there. Unfortunately, still no open hands or open fingers, though. But uh, the other thing that I wish it had was uh, options for the uh, cables, for the power cables around the head, uh, middle section, and the legs. I talked about that in part one of the review that I really wish we would have had some different option for that if you don't want to use the vinyl covers. But unfortunately, we do not. So hopefully, uh, someone will be sorting me out. Uh, I got uh, a friend offered to send me some uh, of just the regular cable covers. There's the rings that cover the regular uh, high mobility type Zaku too. So hopefully, we'll be getting those from him, and I can use those for my kit here. Anyway, uh, if you guys have any other questions or comments, I'm sure there's probably some stuff that I maybe forgot to mention, or some maybe some more specific questions about some specific parts maybe that you guys had it in mind that you wanted to ask. Uh, there's probably some little bits and bobs here and there that I maybe forgot to mention or something. So uh, leave your questions and comments down below. I'll try to answer them or someone else will pick that up and answer your questions there. Uh, again, if you missed part one of the review, you want to see more about the Zaku itself, you can go back and check that out. Uh, otherwise, just a huge thank you again to Mind Phoenix Hobby Store for sending me this kit to share with you guys. Uh, sorry about the delay getting this out to you. I tried to get this built as soon as possible. Uh, obviously, there's a lot here to build, so it took me um, uh, basically about a week. It, it was like two weeks actually, but there, I was not working on this every day. So, uh, if I would have worked on it every day, just uh, a couple hours a night for about a week, uh, it's probably how long it took. I know some people were probably going to ask me how long it took to build. So, 
Uh, from now, I'm actually planning on working on painting this, like, soon, like right away. So, uh, I'm going to, how I'm planning on doing that, is because it's such a big, huge thing, is uh, just going to uh, work on it, like, section by section. So, basically the same way that I built it, so, like, just building the uh, torso section. So, I'm just going to uh, paint the torso section first, do that, then do the head. We'll probably do, like, the head and torso together, because they're both relatively small. But, like, then do the arms, then do the legs, and then move to the backpack, and then do all the weapons, like that. So... Uh, I'll of course do some work in progress photos, uh, work in progress videos for you guys. Uh, I won't be doing just the standard colors, I will be doing custom colors for mine and a little bit of customizing to the actual kit itself. Uh, not really a whole lot though, but just a couple small little modifications just to make mine a little bit more different. Obviously one thing is going to be changing the piping uh, and then obviously uh, a couple other small little things, but we'll go over that later in work in progress videos once I get started on this. Uh, I'm going to be off for a few days, and then when I come back, I'll be working on this. And also going to be working on painting another kit as well, uh, which you guys will see more about that also soon. And also, I'm still working on the Mega Size Zaku as well, so it's just Zaku Bonanza over here at House of Zaku Aurelius. So, thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, hopefully that answered as much of your questions as I could. Uh, it's a cool kit. Definitely check it out if you can. If you're a fan of the Zaku or if you're a fan of Gun on Thunderbolt, I think this is definitely the definitive version. The high grade is great. Uh, I think this version is just so cool, though. I really love that huge backpack, uh, that huge fuel tank. It's just so unique. So I like that. So anyway, thanks guys for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.